We, the people of the city of Flint, under the Constitution and laws of the state of Michigan, in order to secure the benefits of local self-government and to provide for an honest, transparent, and accountable government, do hereby adopt this charter and confer upon the city the following powers subject to the following restrictions and prescribed by the following procedures and government structure. By this action, we secure the benefits of home rule and affirm the values of equality, freedom, justice, representative democracy, professional management, strong political leadership, citizen participation, environmental justice, and effective government. We have a declaration of rights in brief. One, the city of Flint shall have in this charter reaffirmed their faith in fundamental human rights and in the equal rights of men and women. Two, the people have a right to and city officials shall pledge themselves to assure residents and businesses a clean, safe, blight-free environment, safe and decent housing, job opportunities, clean air, access to safe drinking water, clean waterways, and a sanitary city, health care, safe roadways, sidewalks, and convenient public transportation, recreational activities and facilities, and cultural enrichment. Three, the city has an affirmative duty to secure the equal protection of the law for each person and to ensure equality of opportunity for all persons. Four, a person shall have reasonable access to all files and records of the city which relate to his or her rights and duties. Five, the people shall have the right to know the rules and regulations governing dealings between the city and the public and shall have access to review procedures on administrative decisions. Six, the city shall endeavor to secure application of the principle one person, one vote for any regional policy making body which taxes or provides any service to city residents or takes any action affecting the city's interests. Seven, only such limitations as are determined by law solely for the purpose of securing due recognition and respect for the rights and freedoms of others and of meeting the just requirements of morality, public order, and the general welfare of the city shall limit the exercise of individual rights and freedoms. Eight, the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration may in no case be exercised contrary to the purposes and principles of this charter. Nine, the enumeration in this charter of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. And lastly, number 10, the city may enforce this declaration of rights and other rights retained by the people. We will now give a brief of what we did in various articles. Article number one, entitled General, Strong Ethics. We found that the current charter lacked a strong set of enforceable and relevant ethics standards. We believe that this has made it easier for some public servants to act in an unethical manner. In addition, the Standards of Conduct Board from the current charter was effectively dissolved and prior to dissolution made weak and ineffective. Therefore, we incorporated explicit ethical standard into the charter that do not allow for illegal activity, use of city resources for 
personal benefit. Participation in activities and actions on matters where officials have a conflict of interest and accepting of gifts or bribes. This new charter includes disclosure requirements for public servants and contractors where conflicts of interest exist. The ethics provisions that we incorporate into the charter are strengthened by requiring the Ethics and Accountability Board and our ombudsperson to enforce the ethics provisions. engagement with residents and current or former city employees, we found significant concern that over the years there were appointees to positions that did not have the qualifications, experience, or ability to do the jobs they were appointed to. The most recent water crisis was just one example of people without the proper knowledge making decisions that affect city residents. The new charter would require that prior to any appointments being made, qualifications would need to be set forth in ordinance and appointees would be required to demonstrate that they have those qualifications. Setting forth qualifications in ordinance means that the council and mayor would both have the opportunity to weigh in on the qualifications and that the qualifications that there would be a measure of consistency over time and that the public would have an opportunity to also weigh in on any changes to the required qualifications of officials. Improved Charter Enforcement. Our interviews with former officials and engagement with residents has brought to light numerous instances where the current city charter was just ignored with little or no recourse for city residents. It is our belief that this has allowed for numerous abuses on the part of various administrations. We have created a formal process via which citizens can seek remedy through the courts for charter violations. It also allows that a charter violation may be an accident and allows for the violator to correct the mistake before any penalties apply. We also provide specifically for the ombudsperson to be a watchdog and enforce the charter. We believe that better charter enforcement will help solve many issues the city has faced. Secure pensions. The commission has found that prior to moving pension obligations to the state of Michigan Municipal Employee Retirement System, the city had underfunded pensions and that the city pension system is currently less than 50%. In both the first and seventh article, we have put forward requirements to ensure that the city meets its pension obligations. that charter required public notice procedures were out of date and were built for a time when the city had a newspaper with daily circulation. The new charter would require that the city meet the legal requirements of the state of Michigan for public notices, that notices be published on the city's website, and in addition that anyone who wishes to receive public notices may sign up to receive them. Residents, the city commission members are aware that home and auto insurance rates in the city are excessive in comparison to other localities. Additionally, it is extremely difficult for residents who wish to maintain and improve their homes to find financing to do so, even with good credit due to the current situation of the city. Th these led to higher rates of under and uninsured cars and homes, as well as a cycle of deterioration of housing conditions. The commission has inserted language into the charter that would enable the city to first study 
and then pursue a system to provide car and property insurance and home improvement loans to residents. This could be done through working with a nonprofit agency, through city government, or in cooperation with another entity that pursues a similar program, such as the City of Detroit, which amended its charter to allow for such a program in a similar fashion in 2011. Election cycle. Elections for city offices occur in odd numbered years on opposing cycles and typically suffer from lower vo voter turnout. This structure has created a situation in which council members may run against the mayor without giving up their council position. Indeed, in many mayor selections, there are multiple council members running against the incumbent mayor. The dynamic incentives, the council members and mayor to not cooperate with each other. A council member can find political advantage in spending the first two years of their term attempting to embarrass or ensure the mayor fails instead of working together to ensure the success of the city. This charter would require that the city transition to an election schedule in which city offices would be elected during gubernatorial years. This would improve voter turnout in the city for both elections to city offices and for elections to statewide offices such as governor. The election cycles of mayor and council would be aligned so that potential candidates would need to decide if they want to run for council or if they want to run for mayor. We believe that by addressing these problems and implementing the solutions that we have developed, we will increase government accountability, government effectiveness, and public involvement. <music> Recent events have shown that the community does not always have sufficient press resources reporting on municipal matters, for the public to be fully informed of the background of candidates for elective office. The following requirements in this new charter would require candidates to swear that they are residents of the city, disclose any business interests that they have with the city, and disclose any failure to pay taxes to the city. We believe that by addressing these problems and implementing the solutions that we have developed we will increase government transparency. We thank you very much for your support and interest in the Charter and hope that you'll take the time to share with us your thoughts, opinions. We thank you very much for your support and interest in the Charter and hope that you'll take the time to share with us your thoughts, opinions, and concerns.